Coming up on the sports desk, we got the Tartars stepping out of their game plan, usually grinding it out between the tackles. How do they operate when they've got to come from behind in a close thriller? Over at North High, a new basketball coach for the girls means the Saxons are hard at work well before their first tip off. New approach on defense coming up in the 2012 2013 season. Plus, one day, you're going to see these guys making highlight reels for the Warriors, Saxons, Tartars, Spartans, and Knights. We'll give all the local high school coaches a jump start on recruiting duties for the class of 2018 and beyond. All that right now on the Sports Desk. What's up, Torrance? Welcome to another week on the Sports Desk. I'm Juan Hernandez. We're right around that time of fall where you've either just celebrated homecoming week or maybe you're about to on the field. That means everybody's right around midseason form, so why don't we just dive right in and check out some of the action. Over at Torrance High, the Tartars are grinding away with their usual ground and pound double wing offense. And if that run first approach sounds like boring old school football to you, well, clearly you didn't head out to Zamperini Stadium with Jenny Phillips to watch them in a matchup against El Segundo that came right down to the wire. El Segundo in Torrance tonight, taking on the Tartars who are 1-0 in league. After a quiet first half, Torrance comes out fired up. Down 10-6, Kamar Miller breaks into the end zone for their first touchdown. Torrance up 13-10. El Segundo quickly responds with an impressive 81-yard Lars Newtbar touchdown pass to Jamie Stewart. They're now up 17-13. Early in the fourth, Newtbar looks like he's in trouble, rolls out of the pocket, and finds Stewart again, wide open for another touchdown. Torrance refuses to go down easy, though. With five minutes left, Jacob Kalama hits Spencer Kovacs in the end zone for a quick score. They've got to go for two here. But Jonathan Hurd gets shut down hard. Tartars trailing 24-22. Under two minutes to go, Torrance gets the ball back deep in their territory. They convert on a big fourth and four. Torrance with a little life here. But a couple plays later in that same drive, Kalama throws an interception, and El Segundo holds them off for the victory. Though these Tartars are feeling the pain, they're staying optimistic and already getting ready for next week. It's, it's, a, it's a frustrating feeling after the game. You come on the sideline and you just feel all of the, the guilt that if you hadn't thrown that ball or if you had hit somebody else or kept it, that we still have the ball and had it, it would have been a minute 30 left and try a chance to win the game down by two. So, too many mental mistakes, penalties killed us, and they're the better team today. Next week we have Centennial homecoming game. We're going to win. We're going to pound the ball. Run the ball down their throat. You know, show us all we got. We have a lot of tartar pride. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. on the field, we're just going to play hard nose football. Even a little T-bowing couldn't remedy this heartbreaking loss for Jacob Kalama and co. The Tartars fall to El Segundo 24-22 at home. Up next, they take on Centennial for their homecoming game. From Zamperini Field, I'm Jenny Phillips for the Sports Desk. So the Tartars fall to 3-4 and four with a close loss to El Segundo. Running back Bobby Wilson out another week for the Tartars, so Jonathan Hurd carries the main load once more. With another big night on the ground, he knocks out 150 yards and a TD on 23 carries. Kamal Miller added 79 yards and a TD on 18 carries. The difference in this one, the Tartars had the ball for nearly 16 minutes in the first half, but only squeak out six points due to costly turnovers. Fumble and an interception kept things close enough for the Eagles to make that second half comeback. And picking up some more football action around town, the West Warriors dropped their second in a row after a 5-0 start. They're upended by Redondo 34-31 and an OT thriller. Leading by three with a chance to win the game in overtime, the West defense forces a fumble near their own goal line, but officials ruled the Redondo runner down by contact. On the next play, the Seahawks punched it in to push the Warriors to 0-2 in league play. They're definitely backed into a corner now, needing to knock out some important league wins. 
They want to see some postseason action. South High didn't fare much better in, Pioneer League, in a Pioneer League game against Centennial. The Spartan defense allows 314 rushing yards with two Apache runners topping triple digits in yardage. The Spartans had a chance to lead going into halftime, but to putting together a drive that ended with an interception and eventual Apache TD. So after entering the half within striking distance at 13-3, Centennial rallies off 21 unanswered points to close out the game and push South to 0-2 in their league. Another team now in desperate league of some league wins with the rest of the way. Now one team we all know has been flying high and letting it fly all season long is the North Saxons. Led by what we've called the big three right from the start, quarterback George Hernandez and receivers Mike Gerardo and Devontae Jenkins, there hasn't been a defense that's managed to slow down the squad's air attack. Then, the team's top playmaker Gerardo suffered a concussion against Centennial, but instead of mourning the temporary loss of the speedy receiver, the Saxons offense treated Gerardo to one heck of a show from the sidelines. Hernandez and Jenkins linked up 10 times for four TDs and 149 yards. The rest of the North receiving corps helps Hernandez throw down 416 yards in the air, five TDs en route to a 28 to nothing lead before the half. The Saxons come up just short of hanging 50 on the Lawndale Cardinals. Cardinals they win 49-21 and bump their record up to 5-2. But more importantly, they are sitting pretty at 2-0 in the Pioneer League. They're right in the driver's seat just waiting for Dorado to get healthy and help them score even more points. In our last football score of the day, we've been talking about El Camino Warriors struggling on offense. They finally get things going against Riverside, the number three ranked JUCO team in SoCal. Unfortunately, the defense allowed Riverside to roll up 733 yards of offense and 63 points compared to Elko's 491 yards. Warriors tally through 35 points but played catch up most of the night. Quarterback Jesse Scroggins left the game after suffering a shoulder injury early in the third quarter. Scroggins still managed to put up a great night with just over one half of work. He was 16 of 25 for 295 yards and three TDs before leading the, leaving the contest. All right, everybody, coming up after the break, it was a painful week for Torrance football, but no worries, winter sports are going to be here right before you know it. One team in town is already hard at work with their new leader and a fresh scheme for shutting teams down. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sports Desk. North Saxons girls basketball team has a new coach and a new approach with the winter season right around the corner. You hear it in every sport. Defense wins championships, right? But for a squad that doesn't feature the size to box out and block shots against bigger teams, Saxons are about to remind us not to focus on what you don't have, but work with what you do. Brittany Johnson explains. Now let's have one more. Ready? Shot! <laughs> Go on. Shot! Come on. 
closing out on the shooter wasn't the only thing these girls were working on today with their assistant coach. Passing. On the ball defense, health defense, and one-on-one -on -one drills are among the many things that kept the team busy in their preseason workout. The Saxons have a new addition to the team this year, but I don't think you'll see her on the court anytime soon. You'll have to look at the sidelines. First year head coach Lauren Kamiyama will be implementing a different system than what the team is used to. Our defense, we're probably going to pressure. Uh, we're small, so uh, we really can't match up too well with the big, so our thing is to pressure them, hopefully cause a lot of turnovers. And if you know anything about defense, then you know it's all about the footwork and the hustle. Coach Kamiyama says she has been working hard with the team to refine their footwork to make them more efficient and quicker than what they already are. The Saxons finished third in league last year and made it all the way to the CIF playoffs second round where they fell short to Rigetti High School. This year, with eight returnees, they have their sights set higher than that and hope to make it all the way to the CIF playoffs. Our girls are going to play hard no matter what the score is. The Saxons might not be blocking any shots this year, but Coach K says they'll be laced up, ready to create havoc and throw other teams off of their rhythm, which hopefully will lead to some easy points on offense. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Brittany Johnson. Thanks for that, Brittany. Believe it or not, winter sports are less than two months away already. Lady Saxons are going to hit the hardwood in early December. Other sports on tap for the winter months all boys and girls soccer, girls water polo, and wrestling. So for everybody at home anxious for those sports to get going, you can start the countdown on your calendars any day now because it'll be here right before you know it. Now, back into some fall sports. Last week, we saw the El Camino Volleyball Squad build on a conference win streak that had reached the 30s. Ranked 16th in the state, taking on the number 10 team in California, Pasadena City College, that streak finally came to an end. You'd have to go back as far as 2010 to find the last time the Warriors lost to a South Coast Conference team. 32 wins in all, a run the last year's state Final Four, and 10 of the last 11 South Coast Conference titles. Just some of the highlights on this program's resume. So while one good streak comes to an end, no need to worry, the Warriors are still loaded for a deep postseason run this year. Ending a winning streak won't stop that, so congratulations to the El Camino Volleyball Program for an amazing accomplishment. Also on the hardwood, the South Spartans continue to build on their strong finish to September. They top El Segundo in a Pioneer League match that puts them in the driver's seat in their league with a 4-0 record. They dropped the first set of the Friday matchup, when then stormed back with three straight wins to close it out. Eagles didn't get any closer than a seven-point loss in the second frame and get smoked the rest of the way. Erica Eastley had 19 kills and Corey Kush adds 47 assists. Less than a month ago, the Spartans were barely above 500 with eight losses. They are now 14 and eight overall and undefeated in the Pioneer League. Okay, everybody, when we come back, the future stars of the sports desk lacing it up and getting a head start on their recruiting videos and highlight reels. You're gonna love this. We'll be right back on the sports desk. They call them the golden years, and for many seniors, they are. But for too many others, retirement is like a prison. Do you have any jacks? The difference? This couple saved for their retirement, and this couple didn't. It's your choice. Choose to save. To learn how to get started, get your free Power to Choose brochure, because your retirement can truly be your golden years. License and registration, please. Ah. You know why I pulled you over? Ah. That's right, you are texting. Ah. Sit tight, I'll be right back. Ah. Ah. Zombies. When you drive and use your phone, you pay over a third less attention to the road. Winston! Just one more inning, Grandma! Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. 
Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. We're giving you a little volleyball news, plenty of football scores this week from our local schools, but this time, we're going to mix it up a little. City of Torrance hosts a youth flag football league on Saturdays that features some of the most excited and energetic soon-to-be studs that you're going to find. They're going to make some highlights on this show someday anyway, so here's a little preview of what we can all look forward to. All right, kicking it right into gear with the Rams, number 44. I'm going to call him Jimmy Jukestick Foreman, taking the sweep and putting on some moves through the defense. There's more. Jimmy doesn't just have moves. Kid's got style, too. Check out that hair. Jimmy, tight lid, kid. Anybody that can pull off that leopard print for a hairstyle is cool in my book. Throw a skinny tie on that guy and let him hang out with me. Okay, next up, the speedy Gregory Thomas, double back formation, starting in his own end zone. Thomas gets the handoff, starts between the hash marks, and he is gone. Nobody's going to come within five yards of this kid. Look at that. Guys, I just took it to the end zone. What'd you do today? Why wouldn't I score six on that play? Thomas, gunning for a 4-2-40 when he gets invited to next year's NFL Combine. All right, and we've also got some of the lady cheerleaders here cheering on the Chargers and Cowboys, giving the guys something to show off for. So number 35, Corey Hutchison, is going to bring his A game. He's going to take the QB option around the right corner here. He's going to make one, two, how many is this? Three, four, five, six. It takes seven people to catch up to this kid and grab the flag just before the end zone. Hutchison dies. He's proud of that one. Look at the style points there. Flips it to the ref. Poses. I need some love for my teammates, guys. And last, we've got tiny Tyler Spilka of the Jets. He's met in the backfield, but whoop, jukes out the entire Raider D. He even fooled himself on that one. Look, a little mid-play break. Uh-oh, nobody blew the whistle. Time to keep going. Spilka takes it to the house. Best part of this one right here. After all that, makes everybody miss. He loses his flag in the end zone. Nobody even touched him. Ain't that some luck. All right, games from the city's Parks and Rec Youth Flag Football League will be played at parks all over town until early December. Our sister channel, Torrance 22, airs some of those games every Saturday and Sunday starting at 9 a.m. and daily at 4 p.m. until after the holidays. So you've got plenty of chances coming up to check out the future of Torrance football. And as always, we know there's a lot going on in town when it comes to sports, so if there's anything you'd like to see on the sports desk, let us know. We plan on showing you some action from the high school surf league featuring local standout athletes, and of course, community events like the flag football you just saw. They're all some of the things that make Torrance sports so special, so the more we can share with you, the better. Call us anytime, email at the sports desk at torrentsca. Gov. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for us this week, everybody. Next week, we got Bishop Montgomery football and a huge Delray League matchup that could put them in the driver's seat to win another league title. Elko Volleyball looking to bounce back and maybe start a new conference winning streak. I don't know. You want to see how it all plays out, you're going to have to keep checking in with us every week. We're going to have all that and then some. See you here next time.